Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. In November 2004, when Ukrainians went to the streets, it ended with the famous Orange Revolution. The face of the Civil War uprising was Viktor Yushchenko, who as a result became the president of the Ukraine. Jacob Elon, I-24 News anchor, sat down with him today. Let's see what they had to say. Mr. Yushchenko, thank you very much for uh, talking to us. Uh, I must say, you look wonderful, and the world was watching you uh, suffering just a few years ago. How do you feel? Time heals. Now I feel much better than two or three years ago. And especially better than 2004. You know, it's a small price to pay for what we call independent Ukraine. What is going now in Ukraine, according to uh, you? Очень важно, чтобы дать правильный ответ на этот вопрос. In order to answer that question, it is very important to analyze the Russian factor, the Moscow factor, the Kremlin factor. Кремлевский фактор. Я начну с того, что если вы возьмете российскую историю. First of all, if we consider Russian history over the last 300 years, or the last 100 years, or even today, Russian foreign policy has always put the Ukraine question as its highest priority. Putin is now building his new realm, the new Russian Empire. And without Ukraine, this plan cannot be achieved. Without Ukraine, we cannot imagine the Eurasian space that Putin is building. Without Ukraine, we can't imagine the customs union he is establishing. Without Ukraine, we can't imagine the political bloc of the future country members of the new Russian Empire. In other words, Putin's plan has one indispensable priority, Ukraine's participation. On the other side, the Ukrainian nation has fought 350 years for its independence. Today, the vast majority of the Ukrainian people considers its country as sovereign, indivisible and independent. Those two sides oppose each other today in Crimea and in other eastern Ukraine regions. The bottom of the problem nowadays is that either the Russian plan for a new USSR is achieved, either we defend Ukraine's independence and we fight the Russian neo-imperialist plan. So I'd say this fight is not only Ukrainian's fight, against the political direction in Russia, it's rather Europe's fight and Asia's. The United States and the Europeans are siding now by Ukraine. Do you have any hopes that uh, the United States and, and the Europeans will help Ukraine against Putin in Russia? I think Putin fears two things, his people's reaction and the international community's reaction. So right now, what are the two basic conditions to solve this conflict? политических игроков мира, ключевых государств мира. 
a massive planned presence of key politicians from all over the world, an open policy and empathy toward the Ukrainian people. The declarations made by the UN Security Council and the American, French and British governments are on the right track. I think that in order to express empathy, the best thing to do is to establish delegations of observers able to supply data to the international community about the current situation in military camps. They should be able to shed some light on the different levels of political conflicts, and not only political, in Ukraine's western regions. The lies broadcast by Moscow's media travel around the world. The world was misinformed regarding the harshness of Putin's aggressions against the Ukrainian people. So today, it is very important to have some presence of media and journalists, which can spread the truth about the violent actions Putin is inflicting on the Ukrainian nation. Are you, Mr. Yushchenko, are you optimistic that this thing will resolve and Russian forces and Putin will just go away, or are we going towards an inevitable conflict? I think the Russian plan consists in that to bring a large damage I think the Russians' objective is to harm Ukraine's integrity, Ukraine's sovereignty, Ukraine's indivisibility. Putin's plan is to recreate a South Ossetia too, and Abkhazia too, a Transnistria too. The instability has always prevailed wherever Russia was. It's a region spreading from Transnistria to Abkhazia, Ossetia and Caucasia. Putin wants by all means to drag Crimea to the conflict. The deployment of the Russian fleet in the Black Sea is a factor of the instability in this region and in Ukraine in general. That's his dream. He dreams of beating Ukraine. But I can say with absolute certainty, Putin will not be able to defeat Ukraine. Putin will not beat Ukraine. We might lose some local fight, but we will not lose the war. So on that point, I am optimistic. Because it looks like there is two choices, either you go with the West or you go with Russia. Is, is there any way in between? On a din, on a din. In общем, если мы говорим о о том о том плане, что была Украина, у нас только есть один путь. Это европейский путь. Путь до Москвы это путь колонии. There is only one way. If we talk about Ukraine's existence, there is only one way. It is the European way. Moscow's way leads to colonialism, and that will make Ukraine Moscow's backyard. I think Putin expected to be welcomed with flowers, just like Hitler was welcomed with flowers. But no one has welcomed him with flowers. Not in Crimea, not in Donetsk, not in Kharkov. I think there are a lot of hawks in the Kremlin. Многих ястребов в Кремле. Yes, that was it for the news today, tonight. Tomorrow we will be here at the same time, same place from the Jeff Report. Have a great night.